Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another video at the Pharmacist Academy. Woo! Pharmacy School Blueprint for Success. Now if you're a new student starting pharmacy school for the first time this year, then I am so glad you came across this video. In this video, I'll provide you with tips that will help you become a successful pharmacy student. Now, if you're already a student, and let's say you have a couple more years left, this video will definitely help you also. Utilize the tips and the methods that I provide to you in this video, and you could definitely have a more successful year. Set a foundation. Now, this is mainly for the students who will be starting pharmacy school for the first time this year. Your first semester is going to be your easiest semester in pharmacy school. And because of that, you want to make sure you take advantage. Now, as you progress through pharmacy school, you're going to gain more knowledge. You're going to get more information. You're going to be required to study more information for exams. Now, your goal should be to obtain at least a 3.5 GPA because you want to make sure you set that initial foundation. For my first semester, I worked my butt off, literally, oh my goodness, I studied so much, but I came out with a 4.0 GPA. After I came out with a 4.0 GPA, I was able to like maintain around that GPA until I graduated. Now imagine if you started the semester and you completed with, let's say, a 2.9 GPA. It's going to be very hard to bring it all the way up to even past the 3.5, okay? So that's why it's very important to sacrifice during your first semester and set this foundation. Study for two exams at a time. I know there's some people who are like, wait, what? I know, it sounds crazy, but this is exactly what I did. In pharmacy school, we had weekly exams. Now, what I noticed is that while I'm studying for one exam, the workload for the next exam was just accumulating. Sometimes, let's say you're studying for pharmacology, you still had to attend classes for, let's say, therapeutics, which will be next week. And you're getting new information for therapeutics, which is going to be on the next week exam. So just imagine just leaving all that information there and accumulating, right? You're going to have to cram, which I didn't want to do. So I focused on two exams at a time. I utilized 80% of my time to study for exams and 20% for the following exam. So for example, if I had five hours to study in a day, I will use four hours to study for the exam coming up. And then second, for the second exam, I'll use one hour to just touch upon the information, right? Just get my foot wet. Instead of waiting until I finish the first exam, then begin studying for that following exam fresh, you know? With this, I was never cramming information. Cramming will not help you retain information. And as a pharmacist, everything you learn, you must be able to apply it, right, in real life situations. Get in your zone, okay? Pharmacy school is a long journey with many obstacles. Don't focus on building a mansion, but focus on setting a perfect brick each day. And that's something I got from Will Smith. You don't want to think about how long it's going to take you to finish pharmacy school. You want to remind yourself each day of your goals and why you're doing this, okay? Whatever motivates you, you want to remind yourself each day and just focus on each day. It's possible to lose stamina and forget about your initial goals. Now, reminding yourself often why you began pharmacy school will help you get through the difficulty. Because trust me, you're going to have a lot of obstacles, and if you don't stay focused, you might lose track. Be outgoing. My only regret through pharmacy school was not being more outgoing. I mean, I had friends that I used to hang out with, but I feel like there were still a lot more people that I could have connected with. Pharmacy is a small world. Your classmates will become your colleagues, your managers, your directors. They may become your co-residents, okay? Now, don't try to get to know the person in one setting. It starts with small talk. Just make small talk. Even greeting people, right? Good morning. Have a good day. How was the exam for you, right? The easiest icebreaker. 
If you see someone struggling on a topic that you're good in, reach out and help out. There's a lot of people in pharmacy school who feel like this is a competition, so they don't want to share information with people. Don't do this, okay? Help people out because they're definitely going to remember it. The more outgoing you are with everyone, the more resources you will get. Wink, wink. (laughs) Become a complete student. This will come back to haunt you when you're looking for jobs or postgraduate residencies and fellowships. You don't want to be that student who gets straight A's, but, you know, with no involvement in extracurricular activities. They don't do anything else. Yes, they get straight A's, but what else are you doing? Okay, are you involved in any organizations? Are you working on the side? Nada, that's not good. You want to get a pharmacy internship, that's what I was doing, so I was working on the side. Or get involved with organizations, which I didn't do because I was working on the side. Pick one at least, okay, because they're both well-respected and it will look great on your CV. And this shows that you have good time management, which is a very important skill not only for pharmacy school, but also for pharmacy residencies. If you use some of your time for a job or school activities, it puts pressure on you. Now, this is actually good. Why? Because when you have pressure on you, you're less likely to procrastinate. You're not going to cram information and you're more likely to value your time. So get involved, do other things aside from just studying for exams. Think practically. School is preparing you to become a licensed pharmacist and not to just pass your exams. Ever heard of that student who gets straight A's, right? They pass every single exam, but when it comes to applying the information in real life scenarios, they can't. They don't even know what you're doing. On exams, professors will most likely ask you questions based on what's seen in real life practice. So that's what you should focus on in the exam and that's how you should be thinking. For example, you're studying about antibiotics, but you didn't focus on the antibiotics we use when patients have penicillin allergies. Why? This is something that will happen in real life practice, whether you're working in a hospital or in a retail setting. You must know the alternatives to penicillin allergies because it's very common in practice. Example number two, you overlook that edoxaban, which is a DOAC. It's contraindicated in patients with cratinine clearance over 95. That's a pretty high cratinine clearance. There's going to be a lot of patients that you see that will have cratinine clearance over 95. So, of course, you should know this importance and information about this medication. You cannot overlook that. Rotations are future jobs. Do not downplay rotations. I'm telling you right now, if you have great work ethic, you could turn each rotation into a future job opportunity or even a postgraduate experience, such as a residency or a fellowship. The same institution that you go for your rotations will be the same institutions that you apply for residencies. So that's why you want to set a good first impression. At some rotations, you may be asked to do things that are not related to your rotations. Just do it. You don't need to complain about it. You don't need to fuss about it. A lot of us, we all had to pay our dues when it comes to this. So just do it, okay? Be a team player and interact with all the staff. Just be outgoing when you're at that site. They're all going to remember you. They're going to say good things about you. Bring a notepad and take notes at rotations. It shows that you want to learn. Now, this is a little tactic that I always utilize when I go on rotations I mean, just imagine you're a preceptor and you're, you know, explaining a topic to a student. And then the student takes out his notepad and start, you know, writing things down. You, the preceptor, your first thought is going to be like, wow, this student actually wants to learn, you know? And it's going to make you feel good as a student and as a preceptor. The preceptor is going to feel good because they know that you're actually taking your information. You know, people love being listened to. So imagine if you do that. Okay, so that's one of my little tactics. Make sure you use it. Study to understand. Pharmacy school sometimes forces us to memorize everything. I know. Trust me. Now, memorizing is the easiest way out. You know, it will definitely get you through that exam. 
but understand it will take you further in the long run. Pharmacy knowledge builds on top of each other. The basic information that you learn in, let's say, your first year of pharmacy school, you needed that foundation in order for you to understand what's going on in your second year, your third year, and subsequent years. Understand from the beginning, and you will be set going forward. For example, ACE inhibitors cause an initial increase in your serum creatinine. Now, it's so easy to memorize this, right? You could simply memorize this and get it right on the exam, no problem. But why does this happen? Why do ACE inhibitors have this effect? That's what you should be thinking about. You should always try to find out why something is the way it is. You're a pharmacist. You must understand mechanisms. Start thinking residency. <sighs> what can I say? The pharmacy practice is heading towards you know, just residencies and, you know, postgraduate experiences is going to get to a time where residencies may be required. I mean, most hospital positions already require you to do a residency. And even staffing positions in hospitals want someone with at least a PGY-1 residency. And this was never like that before. This will unfortunately limit the amount of hospital positions. And I know there's a lot of people who don't really like retail. Trust me, I don't like retail neither. So you want to prepare yourself from the beginning for a possible residency, okay? And you want to do this by getting decent grades, making connections with people, right? Making a good first impression on your rotations, which I didn't include here. And participating in organizations or working on the side, right? That will make you a complete student. Work hard, but play harder. Yes. Do not let pharmacy school take over your whole life. There is always enough time. So please do not tell me you don't have time for friends. You don't have time for classmates. You don't have time for family, loved ones. I don't want to hear it. There's always enough time. You just need to manage your time a little bit better. Do things that you enjoy on your free time. But remember, pharmacy is your first priority, and that's why you need to just take care of that when it's time to take care of that so that you can have free time, okay? You want to have a balanced life, but remember that pharmacy is your first priority, so take care of that. And that will be the end of this video, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, if you're a student starting pharmacy school for the first time, I'm so glad you came across this video. I know this will help you. Trust me. This is exactly what I did throughout pharmacy school. So make sure you took notes and utilize some of the tips that I gave you. Okay? Apply it and see what it does for you. For the people who didn't find this helpful, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Maybe one day I will be able to create a video that, you know, may help you in your pharmacy life. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with somebody who could benefit from this. Make sure to connect with us on these social media platforms. Thank you for watching this video, and I'm out.